Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today. We're going to give everyone just a few minutes here to get in the Zoom room uh, before we get started. So let's hang out for another, another 30 or 60 seconds and then we'll get started. All right, thanks everyone for being here. We're gonna give it about 30 more seconds before we get rolling. Let folks figure out their audio and video um, so they can get the most out of the webinar. So let's hang out a little bit longer. All right, well, I think with that, we can get started with our webinar this morning slash early afternoon. Hello and welcome to Fresh Energy's Clean Cooking with Induction webinar. So today our goal is to help you get on the path to kicking gas out of your kitchen. My name is Joe Olson. I do communications at Fresh Energy, a clean energy nonprofit in Minnesota working to speed the state's transition to a clean energy economy. So I wanna take a few minutes here to do a bit of housekeeping. Uh, first off, we are going to have a live Q&A session at the end of the event. Um, please use the Q&A button in Zoom instead of chat. I'll definitely see your question if it comes up in the Q&A uh, and you'll also be able to see each other's questions. So you can upvote any question that you like and it will just rise to the top of the list. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat box, um, but I prefer Q&A that I know where they all are and they're in one place. Uh, so just for fun, I'm going to push you all a poll to kind of get the scoop on who is in our Zoom room this morning. This is our first webinar about induction cooking this year. So I know there's a lot of interest on the subject, so I'm hoping to figure out who we've got here today so our hosts and speakers uh, know who they're talking to. So that the poll should have pushed up. I see quite a few of you have answered. Question one on a scale of one to five, how much do you know about induction technology? And we've got a pretty solid mix coming in here. And then question two, if you scroll down, you'll see there's a second one. Were you planning on purchasing an induction cooktop of any kind? So that could be like a surface or like the plug-in travel model um, before attending or registering for this webinar. Um, so at that, I think we're at 100%. I'm going to end the polling and just for fun, I'm going to push the results to everyone. Uh, it looks like we've got a lot of folks who want to learn more about induction in the room today, which is fantastic. And not one of you already owns an induction cooktop, so I think that's really cool too. Uh, looks like a really good mix of people kind of undecided about induction and um, some folks even planning to buy one. So I'm gonna end the poll for now and get rolling here with the webinar. Um, so first I wanna say a little bit about our sponsors today. So this webinar complements the Fresh Energy Virtual Benefit Breakfast that happened last Thursday. At that annual fundraiser, we usually have um, like a big showroom where breakfast guests can get a look at like really cool electric technology like EVs. They've even driven in an electric vehicle into the lobby, induction cooktops, things like that. We call it the fair of the future. Uh, however, since our breakfast went virtual this year, we're taking the fair of the future virtual as well. So that's what we're doing here today. Um, so the sponsors of the breakfast and of this event today is Parable Wealth Partners. They're our title sponsor for the event. And then we've got a whole list of the Fair of the Future sponsors and they're pictured right there on your screen. So thank you to them for making this possible. And now the main event, I want to introduce our guest speakers today. So I'm joined today by Chef Matteo Macby. He's co-founder and chef at Crew Restaurant in St. Joseph, Minnesota. Hi, Matteo. Um, Fresh Energy's Margaret Cherney Hendrick. She's the director of our beneficial electrification program at Fresh Energy. 
and Julio Campos, who's joining us, I think, from Texas, where the weather is a lot nicer than it is here in Minnesota. He is an in-home advisor with Best Buy, and he's been giving folks advice on their appliances for, gosh, I think nigh on 15, 20 years. So he's an expert for sure. So thank you all for being here. And now I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I'm going to share our beautiful uh, demo video with you all. So Mateo got together with a film crew, oh gosh, a month or so ago and made a video for us. So I'm going to play that right now. Bear with me here. And does everyone see it? Does it look good? All right, I don't hear anyone saying no. So look good. Look Great, here we go. Good morning, Margaret. How are you? Good morning, Chef. I'm great. Thanks for having us beamed into your kitchen in St. Joseph. Oh, awesome. No problem. Good to see you. We have seen you in the New York Times, a wonderful feature story. Uh, we've read about your exciting new restaurant crew and that you opened with your partner, Aaron Lucas. Um, would love to hear more about your cooking style and how you've come to love induction cooking. Sure. Awesome. So our cooking style at Crew is uh, New Orleans heritage, a uh, representation of my mother and grandfather's heritage from New Orleans. Um, just wanted to celebrate that legacy and history of my grandfather being um, a cook on a ship that went um, from the port of New Orleans all around the world. And then those recipes being passed down um, through my mother to me. And so that's our celebration inside of Crew. And uh, the induction Man, it's an amazing uh, piece of uh, technology that I've really come to love. Um, so many wonderful things about it. Um, and inside the restaurant, too, we try to be um, as sustainable as we can. And so that aspect of it is really awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah, at Fresh Energy, we're really excited about induction because, like you're saying, it's super sustainable. It's very energy efficient. There's no... Um, emissions uh, from, you know, gas to worry about. So indoor air quality is great. Um, what inspired you to move to induction? Well, um, so inside of the restaurant, it's a pretty tight space. We've got a, a, um, a front line and a back line in our kitchen. And so our prep space is a little bit tight. Um, and so being able to move to some induction cooking was kind of a logical move for us to be able to uh, minimize the amount of heat uh, that is put into the kitchen. Uh, really cool to be able to do this because it's um, a pretty easy setup and takedown. Um, super clean and efficient, and it makes it really um, safe and easy for our employees to be able to work. Yeah, and it's pretty affordable these days. Technology has come a long way. Uh, cooktops, in particular, induction, you can get between fifty and eighty dollars most often. Awesome. Well, I've got a brand new cooktop here. Let's uh, let's crack this thing open. All right. Let's do it. So pretty simple in here. There's just a cord and our cooktop surface. If you can uh, plug in a toaster, I think you can work this thing here. Okay, it looks like I got everything out and all set up. Fantastic. Should we get cooking? Let's get cooking. All right, so we're going to make um, a fried egg. Fried eggs are always good in the morning for breakfast here. So pretty simple operation, turning the power on. Uh, just from the face of it, you've got a couple of buttons, one's for water, one's for using a, I'm assuming like a saute pan or something like that. Um, so we'll hit that saute button, pulls up a temperature of a thousand degrees right now. And then I think we can go up. So right now it's giving me an error cause I don't have the pan on it. I can put my hand on it. Nothing's hot. So we'll put the pan on. It senses it's there. Yeah. And I think, uh, what we've heard is that as long as you can stick a magnet to any of your pots and pans, they'll be good to go with induction. So you know, cast iron in particular is a really great uh, opportunity for cooking on induction. Oh, awesome. So we've got either uh, a little extra virgin olive oil here. We're going to be frying an egg. So a little extra virgin olive oil here or some butter. I think we're going to do the olive oil this time and see how that works. A little low fat option here for you. 
put some oil in there. Make sure that pan is all covered. Kind of when I pick up the pan too, it, uh, uh, cooktop lets me know that there's something not there anymore, which is pretty cool. Crack this egg. Looks good. A little gentle here. Make sure we can keep that oat yolk intact. All right, and just like that, we're frying an egg here. That's so quick. Super fast. That's one of the things I really love about this. We've got the induction here in the loft that we use um, when we do our cooking for ourselves. And so, uh, you know, chef's late night meals are something that we usually end up having. So being able to cook something really fast is, is really awesome. Now, did you have to get used to the induction moving off of gas? Was there any learning curve or was it a pretty quick speed up? Um, there's a there's probably a tiny bit of learning curve, just more understanding what the buttons will do on the cooktop surface. So, uh, but you know, they all come with instructions and stuff like that. And it usually takes you maybe one time of figuring out and you'll understand how to work it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's like we got this going. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. Just like that, I went down uh, 60 degrees and two, two taps of the button here. Let's see if we can get this to release just a little bit. And so what we're seeing come off the pan is a little bit of steam, right? That's uh, no smoke at all. No smoke at all. Um, it's one of the good things I love is that even when we had the uh, electric tops in here, you kind of smell that metal burning kind of thing. And this is way cleaner. Um, I mean, as soon as I'm done and this egg is done, I could unplug this, wipe it down and put it away in, in probably under a minute. So fast. And out in your area, you've got a ton of uh, solar farms. So you know that most likely the electricity that's coming to serve this induction cooktop is coming from solar energy, which is awesome. Yes, that's awesome. There's two right on the way. You can't can't miss them coming into St. Joe. There's one right off the highway and then another one when you make that uh, right hand turn to come into into the city okay. downtown area here. So, all right, looks like we're pretty much done. I like a nice runny yolk. So do I. Take this out. Got a little beeping here telling me that the pan is removed. We'll just hit the power. There's a little fan that'll keep going, kind of cool down the surface and uh, exhaust some of that heat that was created. There it is, wiped down. I've got a little, uh, I like a little fleur de sol, a little finishing salt on my egg. So we'll put a little bit of that on there. And I also have a little pepper. I like a little spice. Put a little pepper on there. And there's a nice fried egg. Induction cooktop surface. Unplug it. And just like that. No mess, no fuss, no pretty much anything. I can just start eating. That's great. Awesome. Thanks for the demo. Oh, That's you're welcome. Delicious. I wish you could smell it. It smells really good. I'm imagining. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Chef, for inviting us into your kitchen, telling us a little bit more about crew, uh, telling us a little bit more about your experience with induction cooking. Uh, at Fresh Energy, we're really excited about the transition to electrified uh, homes and buildings, and especially around cooking. Um, especially in St. Joseph, we see the opportunities to power this cooking with renewable electricity from wind and solar. And we've just uh, really enjoyed our conversation with you today and uh, would love everyone here to go check out Crew um, and be aware that Model Citizen will be uh, on the horizon soon. Yeah, it'll be awesome. I'll be really excited to introduce um, our youth to this and kind of start a path for some of these young kids to be all about renewable energy. So I think um, I'm going to go eat this egg because I'm hungry. Well, I might go cook up an egg as well. Thanks awesome. so much. You're welcome. See ya. Bye. Bye.
All right. Wow. I can't believe that worked so well. Um, sorry if any of you had issues with uh, seeing the video. We'll definitely post it on YouTube after and share. Um, so, so don't worry if you had any uh, technical challenges on your end. And gosh, so we've got Mateo here today. Um, we're kind of keeping him in the wings until we have Q and A. Um, so thanks for thanks for doing that with us, Mateo and and Margaret. Uh, I kind of felt like you guys were uh, old hands at at the talk show scene. Uh, and and now I think we're going to transition to Margaret, who will talk a little bit about the health, safety, and environmental considerations to think of when cooking in your home. So I'm going to share my screen again. Does that look okay, Margaret? Yeah, that looks good. All right, you are good to go. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, it's great to be with you all today. And uh, Julio and Mateo, great to see you guys again. Um, and I am just really grateful for the opportunity to talk with you about why Fresh Energy is so excited about induction cooking. So. Induction cooking offers many benefits, including reducing greenhouse gas emissions that contribute to climate change, improving indoor air quality, as well as public health, and enhancing energy efficiency. So focusing on emissions first, we know that greenhouse gas emissions from the power sector and the transportation sector are very high in Minnesota and across the country, but emissions from our homes and businesses in the building sector often receive less attention. In fact, Buildings are a relatively small portion of our greenhouse gas emissions in the Midwest today, but they are now increasing at the fastest rate economy-wide. So the combustion of fossil fuels like natural gas and propane for cooking in space and water heating in buildings accounts for about 14% of total emissions uh, economy-wide in the Midwest. So looking at this figure, this is 2017 EIA state-level building greenhouse gas emissions data for both the residential as well as commercial sectors, which is shown here in orange, as opposed to the yellow, which makes up the rest of the circle. So on average, the orange is a relatively small piece of the pie. However, these emissions are much higher in cities. So for example, in 2015, 47% of Minneapolis's citywide emissions came from buildings. Uh, next slide. So how can we begin to reduce climate change causing emissions in Minnesota's building sector? At Fresh Energy, we are taking a three-prong approach. We're working to bring on more carbon-free wind and solar energy to create clean electricity. We're fighting to create robust energy efficiency programs that makes our buildings more efficient and therefore require only small amounts of energy to serve indoor appliances. And we are working to convert appliances that are now run on fossil fuels to clean carbon-free electricity. And we call this beneficial electrification. Induction is just a really great example of this three-prong strategy. Uh, next slide. Now, reducing greenhouse gases in our buildings isn't the only benefit of electrification. Electrifying our homes and businesses also confers major health, safety, and equity benefits. This figure visualizes the harmful pollutants like carbon monoxide, particulate matter, nitrogen and sulfur dioxide, as well as volatile organic compounds that are released through the indoor combustion of fossil fuels. Switching off fossil fuels and onto induction cooking improves public health via indoor air quality. So according to recent research, 62% of residents are regularly exposed to dangerous levels of pollutants from natural gas stoves. Only 35% of those households are equipped with fans that vent natural gas pollutants from stoves to the outdoors. Of those households, only 12% of them actually use these vents. In Minnesota, gas cooking was reported as an asthma trigger by 35% of children and 43% of adults participating in the 2015 Minnesota Asthma Callback Survey, making it the third and fourth most commonly reported trigger for children and adults with asthma in the state, respectively. Now, switching to induction also improves public safety by lowering explosive and fire risk. Since 2005, there have been 67 natural gas pipeline incidents in Minnesota, which have led to three fatalities, 16 injuries, and more than $39 million in property damage. Finally, electrifying our buildings, especially after weatherization and other efficiency upgrades, lowers energy burden. So highly 
energy efficient buildings and appliances will lower energy utility costs because you will only need small amounts of that energy to serve these appliances. Further, as we electrify more and more across the building sector, uh, this is gonna put downward pressure on our electric rates because we were going to be using more of that excess wind power, for example, that we have on the grid that we're not using today. Next slide. Now, the consequences of poor indoor air quality are not experienced equally across all Minnesotans. The indoor combustion of fossil fuels like natural gas and propane through cooking significantly reduces air quality and disproportionately impacts vulnerable communities such as children and the elderly. Three main factors why children are more susceptible to illness associated with air pollution as compared to adults are higher breathing rates and greater levels of physical activity, uh, higher lung surface area um, compared to body weight ratios with smaller bodies, and immature respiratory systems. Similarly, elderly populations are more susceptible due to pre-existing health conditions and longer times spent indoors. Further, under-resourced communities that may lack proper kitchen ventilation and or rely on stoves as a secondary heating source are disproportionately impacted. Uh, next slide. So one of the reasons that induction cooking is so much healthier than gas stoves um, is that gas stoves produce elevated levels of what's called nitrogen dioxide, which is a toxic gas. So the health effects of nitrogen dioxide in children in particular include IQ and learning deficits, increased uh, risk of childhood asthma, aggravated respiratory systems, irritated airways, increased susceptibility to lung infections, deleted tissue antioxidant defenses, changed lung function, cardiovascular effects, and increased susceptibility to allergens. Improving indoor air quality through electrification of cooking is especially beneficial during a respiratory pandemic like COVID-19. Uh, next slide, please. Now the good news is that a majority of Midwesterners are already cooking with electricity. So in residential buildings, natural gas is the most common fuel source used for residential space and water heating, but electricity is the most common fuel source for clothes dryers and cooking. So you can see here that about 62% of Midwesterners are already cooking with electricity. Next slide, please. But electric cooking has changed a lot over the years. So most folks that are cooking electrically today are likely doing it with conventional electric resistance stoves, like what you see here on the left-hand panel. Induction, to oops, induction cooking technology, excuse me, has advanced rapidly and now offers a far superior cooking experience. Uh, next slide, please. In fact, induction cooking is cleaner and more energy efficient than both electric resistance and natural gas. So induction cooktops can convey 76% of the heat they generate to the cookware itself, while electric resistance and natural gas cooktops only convey 42% and 30% respectively. So these are the yellow bars on the graph here. Um, and then similarly, induction stoves consume significantly less energy on an annual basis as compared to their electric resistance and natural gas counterparts. So these are the red bars on the graph me measured here in kilowatt hours. Uh, so with that, I am absolutely delighted to turn the mic over to Julio to talk about his deep knowledge of induction stoves. Thank you, Margaret. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Julio Campos. Um, I'm an in-home consultant with Best Buy. I assist clients with their kitchen appliance projects, remodels, and any questions regarding their appliance needs uh, and selections. Today, let's talk about some uh, induction cooking. So affordability, uh, is induction affordable? Uh, I would say uh, across the board, yes, it, it is affordable in comparison to the technology and the performance that it brings. Um, I would say it's a mid-range to high-end price, uh, price in comparison to the fuel, gas fuel types and electric fuel types. Uh, the technology behind it does cost a little bit more than your conventional cooking uh, cooktops or ranges. Uh, that's what makes it a little bit more expensive, uh, but not super expensive in terms of uh, professional cooking types uh, as such. Uh, next slide. Uh, safety, that's a big concern with my clients. Um, 
you know, everybody has little ones and uh, we don't want to get uh, accidents on burning and stuff like that. So with induction, it's by far the most advantageous part of uh, induction cooking. Um, as you saw in the video with Chef Mateo, um, there was no flare ups, there was no flame, uh, nothing was really getting hot, but just the cook the pot itself. And that is the one big, big, big benefit about induction uh, cooking. The surface maintains warm, but not hot. The pot actually gets hot. As you can see on the picture on the left where the water is boiling, that's actual a real life picture where water is boiling and uh, the ice cubes are cool to the touch. They're still intact and have not even melted while uh, the water there next to it is actually boiling, uh, which is great uh, in terms of the safety feature. Uh, next slide. Uh, in terms of comparison between gas, electric, and induction, uh, it's very subjective with my clients. Uh, it really depends on your comfort when it comes to how, how comfortable you are with cooking on gas. A lot of people prefer that. Uh, some people prefer and really are used to cooking on electric. Uh, I consider induction a step up from electric cooking. Um, there are uh, some benefits, as, as Chef Mattel did describe, on his video is that when you're cooking on gas, you have to wait for uh, preheats, right? The pot, the pan has to get hot, has to re-temperature. And you noticed on the pan on induction, it was instant. It was very fast. It's uh, very, very responsive. Uh, and some people prefer that. They, they're in a hurry. They need to cook fast. Uh, we need to feed kids. We need to feed the family. Uh, and then cleanup is a breeze. As you saw, he put that induction uh, cooking surface away very fast and started enjoying uh, the food, which is, which is great for uh, induction. Next slide. Uh, here, there's just a picture of um, a certain type of uh, brand of induction uh, cooking. This is highlighting the digital surface of an induction cooktop. Um, safety, again, is, it's, a big, it's a big concern with clients. Um, you don't, there are no knobs on most of these, everything's digital. Uh, a very accurate, very precise. Uh, there's a lot of sensors in a lot of these uh, cooking services. So you can adjust for preheat times, you can adjust for temperature, you can adjust for uh, time cooking, cooking times. Um, they also have um, sensors that, that know when a pot is on the surface so it can start cooking. Um, you can also set a cooking time. So say for example, you wanna cook something for about 15, 20, 30 minutes and then maybe hold it at a simmer. You can program that just the same way you would program an oven. Uh, very intuitive. You can even lock the cooking surface uh, while you're cooking so that nobody really touches it or plays with it like if you have little kids running around. Uh, so it's, it's really easy to use. Uh, if we can actually use a, uh, a smartphone, you can use an induction cook surface. It's pretty easy to use. Next slide. Uh, efficiency, energy efficiency. Uh, this is a big topic. As you can see on the picture, there's actually a, a blue flame around that pot. Um, that's actually a, it's a virtual flame for people that need to see a flame. Uh, on induction cooking, you don't see anything. It's just you see the pot starts cooking or the pan starts uh, sizzling and you hear the food cooking. Uh, so some people need a, vir uh, a visual and this actual cooktop does that. There's certain brands that do that. Um, the great thing about induction is that there is no heat loss. So the energy is not wasted. Uh, you retain about 70 to 90% of the heat source straight to the pan. Uh, there are, is no heat loss, no fumes going into the kitchen really. Uh, so when you're talking about cost of energy, saving energy, uh, induction is your most cost effective uh, piece that you can own in your kitchen. Next slide. Um, what can you cook on an uh, induction surface? And the answer is pretty much anything and everything. Um, you, you need the pan, you need the griddle, you need a grill, you can put it on top of the surface. As long as the, uh, let's call it the vessel, the pot or the pan is magnetic, it will work. There are some uh, ferrous materials or metals within pans that uh, will not work. For example, stainless steel. Stainless steel, a pure stainless steel pot or pan will not work on induction. Stainless steel is not magnetic, uh, so that won't work. Now, if your stainless steel pan is has a bottom underneath it where you can actually put a magnet underneath it with 
might have uh, iron in it, then it'll work just fine. So cast iron actually works pretty good. Uh, I will caution, um, just be very mindful of the pot or pan that you're gonna be using uh, because it is a glass surface. Uh, you do want to protect the surface, it's glass, so you don't wanna scrape it or anything like that. A lot of, a lot of pots and pans, you'd be surprised, it will work on induction. You don't have to go out there usually and spend a lot of money on, uh, on uh, these pans. Uh, but in, in a nutshell, you can cook anything and everything, if not faster, on an induction cooking surface. Next slide. So induction is actually a, a not new technology. It's new to the uh, cooking market. Um, a lot of people are not familiar with it, but uh, an interesting fact is uh, it actually induction cooking started um, in the military and uh, they used it in submarines because in submarines you cannot introduce heat into a submarine uh, vessel in a capsule and uh, would be bad for, for that submarine. So it's instant cooking, it's fast cooking, less heat uh, in terms of the steam and fumes. Uh, so it's pretty old, pretty old technology. Now it's actually become mainstream. And now we see it on modular cooktops like the one Chef Matteo had that he was using. You see it on ranges, you see it on cooktops. They're varying sizes. Um, you can even get a modular cooktop that it could be built into your cooking, into your counter. Uh, there's a lot of new technology with this. Uh, so it's, it's very interesting to see the, how this has blown up in the kitchen uh, industry when it comes to induction cooking. Next slide. Uh, utilities. This is also a big, a big question with my clients when it comes to, can I use it? Is my home ready for this? Uh, and in a nutshell, it's, it's, it's just like an electric cooktop, really. An electric cooktop uses 220 volts, uh, 40 to 50 amps. And that's exactly what a induction cooking surface needs. Um, you don't need to do a big overhaul of the kitchen. You don't have to rip out electrical lines or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's just an upgrade of a, a regular electric cooktop. Uh, we just need to make sure that you have the amperage that's correct for that specific model. There are some induction cooktops or ranges that require a little bit more amperage. Um, so just uh, a call to your electrician or uh, just looking at your, um, at your box would tell you if you have enough amperage for that specific model. Not all of them are the same. So we just need to make sure that we have the right one for you that best fits your needs. Next slide. Uh, again, the cookware is uh, very important. As you can see on the image, uh, the pan has to be magnetic. It could be pretty much any surface, uh, as long as it's magnetic, any pan, uh, any brand, it doesn't matter. Uh, usually you'll find, uh, if you go to the store, you are selecting or buying new pans, you can look at uh, kind of like a loop-de-loop. -loop. That is the logo for an induction cooking. It actually looks like a roller coaster, like two loops, uh, two curls. That is the logo for induction ready uh, surfaces. Uh, and that'll work for your new uh, induction surface. Next uh, slide. Awesome. I think that's it, Hulu, unless you have anything else to add right now before I, I dive into the q and A. I I think I'm good. All right, perfect. Well, first, while I have everyone here, I want to promote two of our upcoming events. Uh, in November, we've got uh, a webinar focused on jobs in the clean recovery and breaking into clean energy uh, as a career path. Um, we'll be interviewing Eric Posse, a Fresh Energy board member who's just come out with a new book on that very subject. And then the day after, because I'm a glutton for punishment, we are doing a snowblower exclusive. And I've already seen a preview of the demo uh, because lucky us, we got snow already. Uh, and I think it's gonna be pretty cool. So join us for that. Uh, electric snowblowers are awesome and quiet. And we're gonna be talking about that and more on November 18th. So now, for the reason we're all here, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and launch the Q&A. So welcome everyone to the Q&A component. Thank you panelists for your videos and presentations. Uh, I would encourage our guests to use the Q&A function 
uh, on their screen. I know I got a couple questions here in the chat as well. Um, so first off, Mateo, uh, chef, we haven't heard from you yet today because you had that wonderful pre-recorded video. Um, can I start off with a question to you? Um, and maybe if you could talk a little bit about um, induction and high volume use. I know that I heard uh, the rumor on the street is that you uh, did a special private event uh, with outdoors and social distancing last week and you used induction to prepare uh, locally sourced food for everyone. Do you wanna talk a little bit about uh, how that worked out for you? Sure, uh, we did uh, the first ever solar farm to table sampler. Um, so what we, around the country, there's solar arrays where um, things are actually grown um, either under the solar rays, in and around the solar rays, or a particular animal. Uh, the environment of the solar array creates a, a better environment for the animal. So we had lamb flown in. Uh, we had uh, um, basil, some peppers that were um, mailed to us, um, a bunch of other ingredients. So we created a dinner around all those and we used our um, induction cooktops as well as an open flame to cook um, everything. So no gas was used um, at all. It was all electricity. We did it at Milk and Honey um, Cidery in St. Joe. Um, it was awesome event outside. You got to meet a lot of awesome individuals in the clean energy sector and um, around some education, stuff like that. And so we have some really awesome partnerships that are gonna come out of um, that event. And uh, it's just very cool to have our, even our employees participate in something like that so they can see kind of what the next um, level or the future is of, of kind of volume cooking. Thank you, Margaret. Um, so back at the beginning of the presentations, we were talking about the cooktop being cool to the touch. And Julia, you had some great uh, photos that kind of showed that that is the case. So. Uh, Greg is wondering, is it cool to the touch when you remove the fan, the, the pan itself? Like, does that glass retain any heat uh, when it's done? Is there anything you can offer in way of guidance on that? Sure, it's a, it's a great question, uh, Greg. The, obviously, the pan is going to get hot, right? You're cooking, so you're going to have residual heat coming back down towards the surface. Uh, so the surface will get warm. It won't get hot. Um, and so depending on how long you're going to be cooking something for, the temperature of that surface will get a little bit warmer and warmer as you go, uh, but it won't be scorching hot like it would for an irradiant cooktop or a gas cooktop, right? So you can get a, a nice dish towel and just wipe it down real quick. And I, you saw that in the video, Chip Mattel did that for cleaning. He just wiped it down um, and it didn't scorch or anything. So it, it's warm, but it's not hot. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and so another person submitted a question and they said they heard that induction equipment can be noisy due to the magnet. So uh, Chef Mateo is someone who you know uses it almost every day. And Julio, do you have anything to add about that? Is there truth to the noise uh, component that might be involved with induction cooking or does it depend on the quality of the equipment, the type of pan? What can you shine any light on that for us? Sure. Yeah, there's a little bit of noise. Julio, you go ahead. You probably have more knowledge in this than me. Uh, well, it really depends on the manufacturer, how it's built, um, the features, but they do generate some sound, uh, and that is the sound. Uh, if you paid close attention uh, when Chef Mattel uh, connected and disconnected the unit, you heard a, 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 a whizzing sound. It, you can hear it. Um, so some units do make that sound. Um, so depending, that, that unit that he was using is a portable unit. So you, the fans are outside. When you're talking about a full-on range, it's enclosed, it's a little different. When you're talking about a cooktop, that's enclosed inside the counter. So it's a little different as well. The sound might be might be minimized a little bit. So it just really depends which product you're using or what brand it is that'll constitute to the sound. Um, and when you introduce other sounds, like for example, your vent hood, that's also gonna make that sound go away because the sound on the vent hood is gonna be a little bit louder. You might have the music on playing or you know the TV but they do generally make a little bit of sound. Chef, in, in your experience, I think you've used a, a few types uh, in the in the kitchen. So do you have anything to add about, about the noise? I mean, a kitchen's a noisy place, especially when you're producing amazing meals for many people uh, like you do, but anything to add here? 
Yeah, they're definitely, uh, just piggyback on what Julio said, there definitely is a noise. Um, for us, uh, you might use it three times and it kind of disappears. Um, it becomes just ambient in the area. Our fans are on, people are talking and, you know, other things are clanging around or someone's chopping or doing those things next to you. So it's, um, it's definitely something that uh, you can get used to very easily and it just kind of goes away and you'll, it'll pop back in every now and then kind of as if you put pans on or put pans off, you can kind of hear it. Um, but yeah, he's exactly right. It totally depends on the, the brand that you're using um, and how it's uh, situated in the kitchen, whether it's embedded or it sits on a tabletop kind of has varying degrees of, of noise, but it's nothing that uh, at least for me, it's nothing that is like, just obtrusive to your experience of cooking at all. Perfect, thank you. Um, so Amy is asking a product specific question. So Julio, I think you're on the hook for this one. Is there such a thing as an induction oven or do cooktops simply replace the stove on a conventional oven? Uh, there's not an induction oven as of yet, right? That we know of, uh, maybe it's in the works. We, we're not sure yet. Uh, the closest thing to a faster cooking for an oven would be convection uh, or steam. Steam cooking is actually pretty big now. Uh, steam baking, uh, that, that would be closer. But no, no induction oven for right now. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so now a question from Teresa. She's wondering about uh, the price range on an induction on, on, on an induction stove. And I think you've kind of talked about how it can really vary um, depending on what you get. So she's looking to replace like an entire existing gas stove and oven. So sounds like she's in information gathering mode. Julio, from a price consideration, where would you recommend that she kind of starts her research beyond, of course, this webinar? Uh, well, I would say start at Best Buy's website, uh, see what you find there. Um, there's a lot of other websites that you can get uh, some some pertinent information. I, I would I would actually highly suggest not just our Best Buy website, but also the manufacturer's website. Um, so if you're looking at X brand or Y brand, uh, go there. Go to the go to the source. Go to the manufacturer, and you're going to get a bunch of good information, videos, a lot more than most retailers have. Uh, we do have a lot of content on our website. Uh, but it's always better just to go to the manufacturer's website and, and then come back to us. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, so Karen is asking a question about EMFs. Margaret, is this something that you'd be willing to tackle for us? Sure, so EMF stands for electromagnetic frequency. And Julio, I'm gonna be interested in your thoughts here too. I have read the same thing. Um, I think the biggest concern that I've heard is around EMF interaction with pacemakers. Um, so it's not generally advised if you have a pacemaker to have an electromagnetic induction cooking surface. Um, however, I have not heard of any other instances um, where it would be a concern from uh, a health perspective. But um, Julio, do you have uh, an opinion or have uh, read research about this? Uh, yeah, I, I have. Uh, it, it does come up because it is, it, the induction cooking creates an electric magnetic field. It's kind of like a bubble, right, right over the surface. It's it's not that high. Um, um, this is something that's a concern. Um, a lot of manufacturers know about this already, so they've controlled these waves. It's not so tall. It's not so high, uh, but there are concerns with it, right? So I would suggest if somebody in the family does have a pacemaker of sorts, um, consult a doctor and tell them, hey, I'm, I'm interested in this. Um, there's nothing in writing that says this brand and this brand may affect. I mean, there are, there are cautions. Uh, I have never heard of an accident of sort, uh, but it's something to keep in mind uh, because you just never know. Great, thank you. Um, so Lissa has a question in the chat um, comparing the dials. So how does the temperature dials on a traditional cooktop maybe compare with an induction cooktop. So I, I think, Chef, you mentioned in your video that you like you changed, you dropped it down a little bit and you said, oh, we just lost 30 degrees. So do all cooktops have an actual temperature gauge or are they like general numbers? Like, you know, with a cooktop, we have a dial and we just kind of guess, you kind of know what works for your 
boiling water or whatever you're doing, but is it more precise with induction, have you found? Yeah, I have. Uh, so that one actually has a, it's both both in uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius on that one. So you can get pretty specific um, in using it. And the ones that I've seen uh, out in like places like Best Buy, um, it can vary, but most of them are digital. There's not, some of the older ones we used to have used to have a, a dial on it. Most of the dials have disappeared um, on most of the ones that I've seen now. And you can get very, very specific in the um, temperature that you're using. I know a lot of them are a little bit more um, proficient in more European countries and smaller, tighter spaces where you don't have the ability to have gas or electric in there. You can put an induction stove in there. And so uh, most um, cooking in European circles is very, very precise in the temperature wise of things. And so that kind of information is transferred into ones that, that come here too. But I'm sure Julio has some more info too. Julio, anything to add? Uh, well, um, it's, it's pretty much exactly what Chef Mattel said. I mean, it's, it's, there's so many options. Um, it's, I actually don't have much to add. I mean, he, he was dead on. I mean, <laughs> Perfect. Well, good. That, uh, okay, Margaret, I have one. I think that is right up your alley. So Frank is asking, what is the cooking efficiency of induction versus gas? And does that include source efficiency? So I think maybe like a, an add on to the bar graph you shared with us earlier. Sure. So, I mean, as we've heard from Julio as well, you know, there are a couple ways to talk about the efficiency for cooktops and and ranges. And one of those is the um, efficiency with which energy through heat is transferred from the cooking surface to the cooking vessel, or most often it's going to be a pot or a pan. Um, and so induction is just, you know, leaps and bounds more efficient at that energy conversion um, than natural gas. Natural gas is, you know, you've kind of got a flame, you've got a lot of airflow. Um, so there's a lot of that heat that's actually lost to the air. Um, and then, you know, you've got your conventional um, electric resistance kind of coil burner that sits right in the middle in terms of the um, efficiency from that measure. Um, and then I think source efficiency is, is kind of getting at that, you know, total energy used. Um, with gas, you kind of are measuring that in um, British thermal units, BTUs. With electricity, it's kilowatt hours. So. What I showed in that prior graph was a conversion of gas PTUs that you'd use over a year to kilowatt hours, just so you'd have that one-to-one -one comparison. And what you do see is, you know, in part because of that inefficiency with how uh, heat is transferred to the pot with gas, you're going to have to use a lot more gas by comparison. So you have to use a lot more energy um, to meet your cooking needs as compared to um, induction. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you, Margaret. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of questions in the Q&A too about pricing and it really just depends on the model you go with, the types of pots and pans you go with. Um, so one of the questions specifically is about how much for, for pots and pans. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch things up a little bit and answer part of this question myself um, because my husband has asthma. So we recently bought a, um, like a plug-in kind of travel induction cooktop that we're trying to use when we have like things that take a long time, like boiling water or things like that. Um, and I figured out that none of our pots and pans work because they're copper bottoms. Um, so I went to Goodwill and I brought a magnet from the refrigerator and I found a really fantastic big um, uh, like stock pot that was magnetic on the bottom. I was the one picking up every pot and, and sticking things to it uh, at Goodwill. Um, but now we're using it all the time. So I think, and, and Chef, maybe you can speak to this too. You can spend as much on pots and pans maybe as you want to when it comes with this. Like I, I paid, you know, five bucks for that. I'm sure that you got specialty equipment uh, in your kitchen, but is there any, is there anything you would add to that about the type of pot and pan and like transitioning the entire cook set over or what did you guys do uh, at Crew? Um, no, we do use um, a lot of the equipment we already have or that existed in the restaurant already um, was, um, able to be used on an induction. Um, so we didn't have much to transfer. Um, I've gone to anywhere from 
Costco to to uh, TJ Maxx or Home Goods, and you can find um, you just look for that little um, overarching kind of thing that Julio spoke of earlier. Most um, manufacturers on the bottom now list uh, what it can be used on, and usually when you see that little um, symbol on there, I found them from anywhere from six ninety nine to. Seven ninety nine. I have uh, so we found these just little ones at Home Goods to use here in the house, and it you can see the outside of it's not that way, but the bottom has the induction piece on it that you can use on an induction uh, burner. And this was I think maybe six ninety nine or seven ninety nine, and it's kind of cute too. So. <laughs> like that it's not that expensive the transition doesn't have to be really a, a super serious one you can go to goodwill with a magnet and spend five minutes and figure out if there's one there that suits your needs i think the biggest thing is figuring out you know it's like a car you can add all kind of bells and whistles to whatever it is you want if that's what you want to have or if you just want generalized cooking vessels to be able to use and you have no you do have no care in the world what they look like um you can find stuff for really inexpensive that you can use so Perfect. Okay. And this is the um, induction symbol. Is that right, everyone? Okay. Just to make sure everybody's got that sort of below five version of the screen share. Well, thank you for that, Margaret. I was just trying to quietly type so I could share a picture. So that was even better. Um, and, and Chef, I'm going to put you on the spot one more time. Um, so I've got a question uh, from Audrey about spills in the kitchen. And I know things never boil over in your kitchen, but let's say they were, uh, say they were to boil over on an induction cooked up. How is the cleanup for that? What does that entail? Is it easier than gas? I mean, I would assume it was because there's nowhere, nowhere for the liquid to go. But what about, is it easier than like an electric flat cooktop? Like, what would you say about cleanups if you were to? spill or have a boil over still don't. <laughs> that's never a misnomer there uh, it's very easy uh, if you think of uh, any type of metal whatever uh, tends to be porous and so when something spills it can get down into those pores with the glass cooktop um, it's less porous and and much easier to clean and because of the speed and efficiency of the induction uh, normally you can and the temperature that happens afterwards some of those um, electric or gas, we have to wait for everything to cool down before we can actually clean it. The induction cooktop, as you saw in the video, I can immediately wipe it down afterwards um, and store it away. Any uh, kind of that little non-abrasive cleaner that you might use on your electric um, gas or electric glass top cooktop is the same you could use on here. Um, and, you know, sometimes because of how these are set up, um, just a little bit of soap and water on a towel will take care of whatever spills over. And it's a smaller space, you know, if you get boil over and it hits and splashes and goes here, this one, you only have a small amount of space that if it boils over, it's usually coming to your counter or something like that, but um, they're pretty easy to control and it's really responsive. So turning down that dial um, in temperature really slows whatever it is that you're cooking down almost instantly. So if you have something in boil over, it's just a couple of hits on that dial and it comes down versus there's so much um, gas and electric, the heat is still there and it, it just stops doing it, but the heat is still pumping. And so you, it takes a little while for it to kind of calm down a little bit. So yeah, it's pretty easy. Thank you. Um, Margaret, a question for you about venting. So since uh, there are no, since if you have induction or electric, you're not cooking with gas, does that let you off the hook for venting your kitchen? I know that venting is a, a problem here in Minnesota and a lot of homes don't have a kitchen vent or if they do, it's like not properly set up. So what would you add there? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, I think you're certainly in better shape if you are using induction versus if you, especially you're cooking with gas or propane but I wouldn't say that it's advisable to go completely without um, a hood and preferably one that vents to the outdoors. And that's really because there are other fumes, you know, through just uh, heating up um, food. And if you think about, you know, sometimes you see oil smoke, you know, those sorts of cooking um, odors, if you can smell it, you know, it's an emission. So um, it's not great to, um, you know, especially in small kitchens um, where you've got a lot of folks, especially in commercial kitchens, um, that's why you really need that, you know, super powerful ventilation. And I, the same goes for um, 
you know, residential kitchens. So while you won't have to deal with the fumes and pollution that's, you know, associated with the gas, you, you should have still a hood. And um, Julio, I'm sure that there are specifications that you can speak to around um, your recommendations for your products as well that you're selling. Sure. Uh, yeah, ventilation, in my opinion, is actually the most important piece of your kitchen. Um, just because it, like you said, there's emissions, you know, whether it be gas, smells, oils, things that you don't see, after a while, they compound, they they cake on onto your cabinetry, your curtains, the walls. You don't see this, but it's after prolonged cooking, uh, you start seeing it. Uh, for some reason, you might notice your walls are no longer the color that they were years ago, right? They're a little different. Uh, and that is because it's a lack of use of a ventilation system. And a lot of people hate using the ventilation system because it's noisy. It makes a lot of noise. And I think the disconnect here is that particular appliance, we are accustomed to using it incorrectly. And we use it backwards. We turn it on after we cook or at the end of our cooking session, right? We're supposed to use a ventilation system before we even turn the cooking surface on, whether it be gas, electric, or induction, it doesn't matter. You wanna create a sense of airflow. So you wanna turn on a ventilation system on low where it doesn't bother or it doesn't make a lot of noise uh, at least five minutes before you start cooking to create a sense of airflow. Uh, so when you start introducing emissions or heat or oil into the air, it actually naturally just goes right up into the vent, right? It's only when you start burning something or a certain type of cooking that you do that you increase the ventilation CFMs so that it can extract most more of that, right? Um, and again, with ventilations, there's a number of units out there, uh, states, local codes, building codes, they do all have certain regulations especially now that we're moving towards uh, energy efficient homes uh, that are pretty much sealed tight. Um, there's a lot of other technology that we, we would have to talk about in terms of ventilation. But um, for that, um, I, I would say uh, get with a smart friend uh, like your in-home advisor at Best Buy so they can come home and to your house and visit or talk to you over the phone about that kind of stuff. Well, and you're on a roll here, Julio, so I'm going to throw another one your way uh, from Molly. So she's asking what the most common setup that you recommend to people when they are just getting started with induction. So she needs to replace her whole stove and oven unit, but, you know, probably not like over by on induction when, you know, she's she's getting started. What's a, something that could like, you know, serve her over an extended period without being, you know, something chef would want. Right, that's, that's great. Uh, with technology, right, everybody has this hesitation of, should I go all in? And should I invest all this money? What about if I don't like it? Um, and and that's, that's a very important uh, concern of, for everybody. Um, so what I would suggest, and what I tell my clients is, if they're not used to something, especially like induction cooking, and they might have used electric cooking before, um, do what Chef Mattel did, buy a portable unit, test it out. It's not going to cost you so much money. They, they make portable units that cost less than $100, like $50, $60. Try it, go to Goodwill, go to use your pan, your pot that you have, and try it out before you buy it, right? Before you invest thousands of dollars into said equipment, right? Because all brands are going to perform the same way. At the end of the day, the technology, it's magnetic with electricity. Uh, that's it. What's going to change between brands is going to be the features, the functions, the brand name, uh, the size, right? That's what's going to drive the price up and down. Uh, but let's get comfortable with the technology first before we dive into it. Uh, and if it's something for you, great. If it's not, you're going to know right away before you invest a lot of money into something that you're going to hate. That's but you won't because induction is cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's really sound advice. Thank you, Julio. So we're coming up on time. Um, so I'm going to launch one more poll just to see kind of what, what folks have taken away from this webinar. But then there is also a final question, again, from Molly, where she's talking about utility requirements. So is there anything else that we should know or discuss about amperage and voltage and how common, uh, you know, like what the most common kind is for an induction uh, cooktop and I mean I know you said like look at what the cooktop 
requires and look at what you've got in your kitchen. But like, let's say you really want a specific cooktop and it would require you to do some rewiring. Like, is that a really big undertaking? Like how, how, what kind of advice would you give to people um, who want to adapt this, but, but need to know a little bit more about that aspect? Sure. Uh, utilities, that's, that's going to be very important. So um, if it's something that uh, we need to look into, it's going to be knowing what kind of amperage is to that dedicated uh, line. So let's just older homes, um, obviously older building codes, they are driving a certain amount of power amperage to that said source, right? So you would have to go to your box to see uh, what the amperage is to that location. So if it's something that you need to upgrade, uh, because that said unit or said product needs a little bit more power, then you need to get uh, a hold of an electrician to uh, increase that amperage for you. I mean, that's it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. Thank you. All right, and we are one minute over. So, any parting words before I end our discussion for today, Chef Margaret Julio? Anything you didn't say that you just can't live uh, without saying right now? All right, well, that's great. So I just shared the results and it looks like people found almost the entire presentation to be incredibly helpful. And everyone is more likely to and buy, buy an induction cooktop. So I think that's fantastic. Thank you everyone so much for being here. And I will send out an email later today with a link to this webinar and the demo video separately. Uh, so check your inbox for that. I'll also link to the upcoming events that I talked about earlier today. So thank you so much for being here. Have a great afternoon.